Hello everyone, my name is Shamil. I'm a PhD student at the Dynamic Legacy Systems Lab at the Italian Institute of Technology. In this presentation, I'll be talking about how did we manage to make our quadruped robot, HiQ, walk over soft terrain. So that hopefully at the end of this presentation, we know why do we really care about soft contacts and soft terrain in general. So let's dive right in. Why do we care about soft contacts? Well, because the world around us is generally not rigid. We got used to assuming that the environment is rigid. And this is nice, actually, because it makes a lot of simplifications to the locomotion control strategies. But the thing is, sometimes this is not entirely true. This was, in fact, highlighted at Weber's chapter in the Handbook of Robotics, that indeed, the compliance of the robot and the environment is dangerous and might cause some oscillations. In more details, why is soft terrain a problem for legged locomotion specifically? Well, the first problem is that most of the locomotion control strategies Take whole body control frameworks, for example, are not terrain aware. This means that they fail to generalize beyond rigid terrain due to the assumptions on rigid contact. In most of the cases, the whole body control formulation dictates that the feet are on rigid terrain and thus required to remain stationary, which is obviously not true in soft terrain. The second problem is because of the soft terrain itself, which induces contact dynamics that might cause oscillations or instabilities that the whole body controllers are not accounting for. With these two problems together, there is a huge mismatch between what the whole body controller assumes versus what the robot actually feels. So how to solve these problems? Well, first thing is to drop the assumption of the rigid terrain. We can use a more generic model that can handle both rigid and soft terrain. But if we do that, we need to perceive the terrain parameters itself. We need to tell the robot which type of terrain is it walking over. And so in order to do that, we estimate the terrain impedance parameters. And this is exactly what we do reformulate or augment our standard whole body controller to account for a more generic contact model. This new whole body controller requires the knowledge of the terrain impedance that is fed back by the terrain compliance estimator. And we keep doing that iteratively at every control loop. We call this approach STANS, which stands for Soft Terrain Adaptation and Compliance Estimation. So let's start with the whole body controller framework. The whole body controller framework consists of a locomotion planner that generates feet and base reference trajectories, and the state estimator that supplies the whole body controller with the current estimates of the base and joint states. The whole body controller realizes the reference trajectories from the planner while keeping the robot balanced and respecting the robot dynamics, joint and torque limits, and the interaction with the environment. The whole body controller source for the optimal joint torques that are sent to the lower level control. So in detail, the main objectives of the whole body control are as follows. The first goal is to execute the planned trajectories of the body and the swinging legs, while keeping the robot balanced. We call these tasks control tasks. Second, we need to make sure that the acceleration and the contact forces respect the unactuated part of the dynamics, which we refer to as physical consistency. We also need to respect the actuated dynamics and the joint and torque limits. We also need to respect the contact constraints due to the interaction with the environment. These are defined by the friction and the unilaterality constraints. Finally, and of specific importance to us, is to remain contact consistent. This means that the stance feet must be in contact with the ground. We refer to that as the stance task. We cast the objectives and constraints mentioned in the previous slide as an optimization problem via quadratic programming that solves for the optimal ground reaction forces and joint accelerations. And using inverse dynamics, we map these optimal variables to optimal joint torques. This slide is just to show you how to formulate the previous goals as a QP. The optimal control tasks are encoded as a cost function for the trunk task and as an inequality constraint for the swing task. We also add an extra term for regularization and constraint softening in our cost function. The physical consistency is added as an equality constraint, while the joint and torque limits are encoded as inequality constraints. The friction constraints are also added as inequality constraints. Finally, our stance task is added as an equality constraint, where we enforce that the feet remain stationary. As I mentioned, the optimal decision variables are then mapped into joint torques using inverse dynamics. As I explained earlier, the whole body controller that was presented was the standard whole body controller, which is not consistent for soft terrain. This is mainly because over soft terrain, the stance task doesn't hold anymore, and instead, we must take the soft contacts into account. Thus, in order to be compliant contact consistent, we use a generic soft contact model that consists of linear springs and damper parallel and perpendicular to the contact point. So instead of the stance task above, 
we reformulated with a compliant contact consistent stance task as mentioned below. And this is how we encoded in our QP. We first extend the decision variables of the QP with the ground penetration and regularize this variable in the cost function. Then we remove the inconsistent stance task and use the compliant contact consistent stance task instead. From the formulation of the whole body control, it still needs the terrain impedance parameters. So we need to provide that online. This is the main objective of the terrain compliance estimator. We do that based on the current measurements provided by the state estimator. It is important to mention that the terrain compliance estimator is completely decoupled from the whole body control, but is using the same contact model. Let me show you a couple of results about stance. First, we show stance's capability with traversing multiple terrain with different terrain compliance, both in simulation at the top and experiment at the bottom. Here, I just want to show you that stance is capable of traversing multiple terrain with different compliances, where each leg can sense and adapt independently to the type of terrain. In those couple of videos, we compare stance with the standard whole body controller in two scenarios. At the left, we show a speed test where we start with a low speed and increment that speed till the robot fails. And at the right, we show an aggressive trunk maneuver using stance and the baseline approach. In both of these situations, we can see that stance is always compliant contact consistent and maintaining contact with the ground and thus not failing compared to the standard whole body controller. In here, we show the main differences between stance and the baseline approach over soft terrain in experiment. One main difference to notice is the ability of stance to generate contact consistent ground reaction forces that do not cause oscillation or aggressive contact interaction compared to the baseline. The table here shows the mean absolute tracking error of the ground reaction forces using stance and the standard whole body controller, which you can see that stance outperforms the standard whole body controller with a 14 to 27% less tracking errors. Here, you can see a more dynamic gate with stance, such as a trotting gate. Then you can also see on the right the performance of the terrain compliance estimator where HiQ is walking over four different terrain compliance. We can see that each leg can independently estimate different stiffnesses as shown in the table below. So in conclusion, we presented stance, which unlike previous work, it does not assume that the ground is rigid and can adapt to any type of terrain compliance online. Stance consists of a new formulation of the whole body controller that can account for soft terrain given the terrain compliance. Stance also has a terrain compliance estimator that can estimate the terrain impedance parameters online and is not computationally expensive. With stance, HiQ can traverse and transition between multiple terrains with different compliance without any pre-tuning. And as we showed in simulation and experiment, each leg can sense and adapt to the changes in the terrain impedance independently. Finally, stance makes the locomotion control strategy compliant contact consistent, so it allowed HiQ to remain in contact with the ground, which allowed it to be more robust in challenging scenarios. Lastly, I would like to thank my co-authors and the members of the DLS lab. We dedicated the link at the bottom to show you our recent work that is going to be presented at ICRA, such as our work on terrain-aware MPC, trajectory optimization, learning-based motion generation, and our recent work on our new quadruped robot, HiQ Thanks for watching.